Fucking Jesus. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, okay. I wasn't originally going to record this video tonight. I was going to go to bed and record it tomorrow, but fucking Jesus. I, could, I had to talk about this one. Okay. So much better. So much better. Love this episode. Uh, if only for those last, like, three fucking minutes. Oh my god. Uh... Okay, so yeah, let, uh, where to start, because this is, uh, really the only, th there's actually a lot of good stuff in this, in this episode, but the main thing is the fucking kingpin, like, yes, this is what I wanted, like, this is, I can tell right now, this is going to be easily the most interesting villains Marvel's ever done in their movies or TV shows, and this character's going to be fantastic, and it's like, oh my god, so good, uh, Okay, I gotta, like, tone it back a little bit. Okay, so this episode's... By the way, I'm just astonished at just how much violence this show is getting away with. Or, like, that they're even willing to try. I mean, this is some fucking brutal shit. Uh, like, the episode starts out with the, like, the origin story of the uh, Russian brother gang leaders. Um... Uh, where, uh, it, like, they're in a prison together, and they're getting tortured on a regular basis, and there's, like, one dead, uh, there's one dead sailmate with them, and they break out by making a shift out of the dead guy's rib cage, and, like, they, they show him, like, ripping out ribs, too. It's like, fuck me. Oh, God. And then it just kind of just escalates from there. I mean, Daredevil, like, towards the end, just goes straight on Batman, uh, I was actually kind of interesting, like, in the last episode, he was kind of channeling, like, Christian Bale's Batman, he was doing the voice, and he was like, where are the other drugs going into, and all that, and it was kind of like a really, Daredevil, really, uh, and this one, he kind of channels more Michael Keaton Batman, and I think that works better, so I'm hoping he sticks with that, uh, I don't even find, like, a good blend between the two, we'll find out, but anyway, uh, a few minor cliff notes before I talk about the big interesting thing, which, of course, Wilson Fisk finally revealed full into character. There's so much to talk about that because they take a very interesting approach and then one I wasn't immediately expecting, but I'm one I'm really glad they decided to go with. Um, this one largely focuses on the relationship between uh, Matt Murdock and uh, Night Nurse, who uh, her character name is called Carol, something like that. Yeah, Claire. Her character's name is Claire. And I really like their dynamic together. I like that. Uh, Night Nurse is, like, almost very much basically Matt's conscience in this series. Like, they're talking about, like, what he's doing and people he's hurt and how she's, since he's a nurse, she's worked with a lot of people she's hurt, uh, he's hurt, and he's kind of reminding him, like, uh, while he's being the bad guys, his actions still have consequences, and maybe that's something he should think about. Um... Uh, and stuff like that. But at the same time, she's also got a really fucking dark side, too. And it's really great to watch. Um, and it's a lot of fun. Like, the, uh, I, I forget. I dropped blank in her name, but she does a fantastic job in this role. Like, uh, what happens is the Russians are trying to track down the man in black, is what they're calling for now, because for right now, no one knows him as Daredevil. Uh, but curious to see how that name pops up. Uh, but as of right now... <clears throat> They're trying to track him down, so they, they track him down to uh, Claire's old place, only to find her not there, but they track her down to where she's staying, which is, like, uh, at a friend's house that she's cat-sitting for, and, uh, they kidnap her, Matt Murdock finds out, he goes hunt them down, and just goes straight on Batman on him, because, by turning out all the lights, using a bunch of distractions, like, home alone a lot of the garage equipment, just to fucking, like, rope people in and beat the shit out of them. Except for one moment, he just throws a tire wrench at someone's head, and I thought that was great. It was almost like, almost slapsticky, because I was like, ooh, Batman wouldn't do that. Ooh, that looks like it hurt. Uh, <laughs> I had a lot of fun with this episode. I thought it was fucking great. Uh, and even though he's, he's doing the Michael Keaton Batman voice, where he's got, it's not necessarily like a loud, where are the other drugs going? It's like it's almost like a, just a loud, angry whisper, and it's really effective, and it's really creepy. But, uh, right when he starts interrogating one of the Russian guys, like, trying to find out, like, information on Wilson Fisk's, 
Night Nurse just grabs a bat and like fucking whacks him over the face uh, because he was torturing her earlier and it's like fully justified. I'm really digging this character. I mean, she still follows the trope of like the damsel in distress, but she's also still that she's willing to defend herself and she's willing to do some pretty dark fucking shit. Uh, like in the like in the first episode she was in with the like oh you shouldn't do torture people to oh torture him here to. Uh, it's like, I don't know where he is, dude, but he's gonna find you, which is, like, actually a line she says in this, in this episode. It's fucking great. I'm I'm really digging the show. Four episodes in, and I'm like, I'm, I'm sold. Like, as soon as, like, Wilson Fisk is in this now, and he's a full character, and he's obviously gonna be a major focus, I'm sold. I'm in. I'm good. Uh, my concerns in the last episode are gone for right now. For right now, I don't know, the show probably have one or two more slumps before it's over, but for now, I'm in. Um, this episode does also pick up a lot of the Karen, uh, Ben Urich storyline, with the whole, uh, United Allies thing. I'm still not terribly invested in that, it's kind of a lower note for me, uh, <clears throat> I mean, I like the Ben Urich character, uh, and I like the Karen character too, but right now, it's like, I'm not that invested in their story. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe they'll have a good payoff. I mean, I kind of like the payoff it had with, uh, Foggy without giving anything away on that one. But, uh, other than that, though, it's like, I don't know, it's kind of a meh storyline. It feels like something I've kind of seen a lot before, so I just kind of, meh, I can take it or leave it. But, you gotta kill time somehow, so there it is. But, okay, so let's talk about the big focus on here, which is Wilson Fisk as, you know, the kingpin. They really did something I was not expecting with this character. Um, and I'm so glad of that, because, like, I was more expecting they were kind of going to rehash the uh, Michael Douglas route, where he's going to be the big, brooding badass, you know, he's the he's always just confident. Whenever he walks in, he owns the room. Um, and he's not. He's not, and they take a very interesting approach to him. They actually make him seem very insecure, very insecure, but not in a, not in like an overt way. More just in a he just gets nervous, you know. He get he gets like a, like the, we're introduced to him that he's asking out a woman who works for an art exhibit. That's how it starts out, and a lot of the episode is focusing on like how he's ha handling kind of poorly this date, and he's kind of quiet, and he's kind of like you can tell he has. Like, how do you describe this character? You can, like, almost tell, like, he's had it rough. But at the same time, what he, he's still taking a, a personal risk. Um, like, he's seen some shit, but he's still human. Like, he's not just the seething, I am I am invincible. Like, no, he's not. They present him as, ve like, almost very vulnerable and very sensitive. That's what I'm looking for. You see, they portray him as tough, but very sensitive. <clears throat> Which is a surprising direction to take uh, Wilson Fisk. I don't think we've seen that interpretation very often, so it's refreshing to see. Uh, but even though, like, the exposition with his character is done smartly like it makes sense in the context situation why he would share his life story with this woman and since a good person like you see it as this sensitive person so you kind of you almost find yourself kind of rooting for a side a little bit but it's also the kingpin so you know there's just a storm brewing underneath and you know he has a reputation for a reason and that comes into play in the last act of the episode where s massive spoiler alert, by the way if you don't want to spoil it, just stop right now but uh, one of the Russian brothers uh, decides to interrupt Wilson's uh, dinner to like talk to him and oh my god what comes like it ruins the date for him he like the girl says she doesn't really want to see him again and he's hugely disappointed if like he's he made a personal risk and it completely backfired on him. And oh my god, the rage that just comes out of this character is fucking terrifying. Like, uh, 
what happens is like the Wilson Fisk henchman with the watch takes the Russian brother into like their uh, limousine and they drive off to this un like under the Brooklyn Bridge or something like that, some kind of bridge. Uh, and the, the henchman just gets a phone call and he goes, "Yes, yes, he's in the pasture side." Okay, click. Mr. Fisk wants to talk to you now, and the door flies open. It's this face full of just pure fucking rage. Just grabs him and throws him down and just beats the living fucking shit out of him. To the point where it's like, how are, how are they getting away with this? Like this, this is like, oh my god, this is horribly, like this is the most violent anything Marvel has published at this point has gotten. I love it, but like, it ends with him just, like just, he takes his head and puts it into like, where the door slams and it slams the door until his head just explodes. And uh, just like, how, how are they doing this? How are they, oh my God. Whew. So yeah, I really like this episode. Uh, Whew. Yeah, I can't wait to see where they're taking this character. I think this is going to be more interesting. This might be better than Loki, what they got here. They have great potential here, and they found just the right actor to play this part, because if you've seen Full Metal Jacket, you know, just as, like, he has, like, he, he can do that, like, inner restrained, violent aspect so well. And this is, I like that he's almost... He's almost like a very violent child. Like, he's it's very emotional, like, very emotion-based. He doesn't overtly show it, but you can tell he's a very emotional person, and that's where a lot of his actions are based. He's willing to start a war because a Russian guy fucked up his date. I mean, this guy is... Does, you do not fuck with this guy, even on a minor level. I mean, there's a big business part of him, but at the same time, do not fuck with him, period, because he will destroy you, and... It, make your head pop like a zit. Whew. So, yeah, I really like this episode. Uh, that's going to be my last one for the night because that's Glenn Lee and I got to go to uh, get some sleep. But, whew, that was a good way to end it. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching, guys. See you all next time.